Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. Picking up exactly where we left off. Uh, one thing I am going to do before we go in here is level up one time. That's not so much because I need that extra point of vitality. It's because I am almost certainly going to die at some point throughout this uh, Sense Fortress journey. Let's also maybe mix up our equipment a little bit. I don't have anything like a heavy armor. You can see the heaviest armor I have is actually the Wanderer set, which I'm wearing. But I am going to put on the Thief set. Mm, except maybe I'll leave the Wanderer coat on because that has by far my highest defense. Uh, because I really like the way the Thief set looks. How do I look? Pretty much exactly the same as I looked before. Maybe I should have stuck with the Wanderer set, but oh well. At least my boots look cooler. Now we are entering an area called Sen's Fortress, and this area is meant to be kind of exceptionally difficult for the point that you're at in the game because it mixes things up. Let's see what this message says. Need humanity. Always rate those up. Give somebody some, some help. Now it's important to note, I am at extremely high risk of invasion here. The only thing that may save me from being invaded is the fact that I am at a pretty low level. So we've got these two lizard men. Now I'm going to show you one of the key things about Sen's Fortress. You can see he's taking damage, and those arrows are flying by my head very rapidly. Uh, that is because I stepped on a pressure plate, so there are traps in Sen's Fortress. That's right, it's kind of like Skyrim, I guess. Where did my Great Chaos Fireball go? Okay, now that I've shown you that, I'm actually going to run back and go to the bonfire. I know that sounds crazy and kind of like I'm being a little girl. But this is how I run through Sen's Fortress. I don't actually fight those serpent guys whenever I have the opportunity. I kind of do it in a, a speedrun-esque way, which may sound a little crazy, but it, it works for me. At least the first part I do in a, a speedrun-esque way, and you'll see why. It's going to be difficult for me to explain, though, because there's going to be a lot on my mind as I make my way through the first room or two of this fortress. Uh, the reason I don't want to fight those guys is because, as you might expect, they are actually fairly difficult. So we'll just run past that pressure plate. These guys will become mind-numbingly easy once we get the weapon that we actually pick up in this fortress, though. So we're just going to run past them and never look back because they are chasing you. And then we're going to run out onto this axe-swinging bridge. And the reason we're doing this is because those guys behind us will now probably fall off. I'm going to try to run past this guy and hopefully the same... Oh god, I locked onto him by accident. That was bad. Okay, now turn around. Hopefully he'll get knocked off by the axe too. And then we're going to run up here. And there will be one more guy who's going to cause us fits, potentially. You can see the axes get more close together. Okay, now that we got this guy, you can see we're not doing very much damage to him. But if I step on the trap, which he is guarding... Oh god, they got to me. They got to me. It's over. It's over. <laughs> I got an arrow through my fucking head. Okay. Total pains in the dick. Sends Fortress in a nutshell right there. So I am going to try to get that humanity back. Maybe it's good that I'm not human in Sense Fortress, though. Like I said, pretty huge invasion risk. That way of running through Sense Fortress, I would say, works 60% of the time. Three times out of five. Two times out of five, exactly what just happened, happens. If that makes sense. Essentially, the, one of those lizards does not get killed by the axes just through basically random chance. Because as far as I know, they don't actually like try to time their movements to the axes. They just run for it the same way that I do. Uh, or sorry, not the same way that I do. They just run for it randomly. So oftentimes they will get knocked off by an axe or like, I don't know, I step outside of their aggro range or something. Sense Fortress is a... It's um, How would you even explain it? A gauntlet of essentially traps and puzzles and enemies that are mostly too difficult for you to kill. But once we finish it, and we come back to this area a little bit later if we want to for whatever reason, there is a bounty of items... And actually, it's not that bad. This is one of my favorite areas to co-op in the, uh, I would call this the mid-game maybe right now. We're entering the mid-game anyway. Uh, because I really like the boss, and I, I kind of feel like the, the area is kind of cool. I think it's a, a testament to the good game design of the developers. There's my blood stain. Now, you might notice this guy's throwing lightning bolts at us as well. Oh, I think that guy got hit by the axe. I pray to God that guy got hit by the axe. Otherwise, I'm just going to get chopped down the same way I did before. Okay, recover lost power. Don't do that backflip attack. Why is there poison everywhere? Yeah, I triggered the trap. So we're... The trap is gone, which is thankful for us. These guys are normally jokes, again, once we get the next uh, weapon that we'll pick up here. I'm glad I picked up that humanity. Losing three humanity would kind of suck. Now, this should only be... Go two more attacks maybe. Thankfully we won't have to deal with our scimitar in plus six form for too much longer. Pop open this chest, 
And inside the chest, we will find two more large Titanite shards, which means we can upgrade our scimitar at least another one time, maybe two times. Now, everyone be very quiet when you go through this area because there's this sleeping guard here, and I don't want to wake him. Okay, now we got to watch out for this lizard. Oh, never mind. He's going to get crushed by a boulder. So that is the second kind of big puzzle in Sen's Fortress is these... Oh, God. Go through the fog wall. Quickly. Are these uh, enormous boulder traps that are actually going to come for us? Find another one of these guys. Okay, you see I just got 500 souls. That essentially means that that other lizard just got killed by that boulder. Either that or I just got a bonus for, for entering the next area. But those are kind of rare. Dark souls, so I don't think that's what happened. Just continually... Oh god, how did this guy see me? This would be a great opportunity to actually use my... Uh, pyromancy. I didn't even know those guys had a poison attack. To be with you. So he cancelled my... Attack. You know what? Fuck it. We're gonna run through here. Hopefully they'll get hit by the traps. They didn't. But there we go. Okay, one's dead. Now we can deal with this other one. Definitely gonna S this up. It still hit me, but with enough backstabs and patience, this guy will fall down. And we are so close. So so close to getting the next weapon that we are gonna use in the game. Uh, although we will, again, go back to our scimitar a little bit later because we are going to upgrade it into essentially, uh, you know, one of the most powerful weapons in the game, at least if you're, if you're going for a dexterity type build. Which I'm, you know, not necessarily prone to going for a dexterity type build here, but possible. I really like the moveset on, on Claylock's Fury Sword, so... Again, if some of this commentary doesn't make sense to you right now, it will. This commentary about the weapons is mostly for people who have already played through Dark Souls, or played some of it anyway, and are familiar with the, the weapon mechanics. Guys, very nearly dead. Sounded like I was kind of trying to do my Michael Caine impression there. Which will never appear on camera. So close. Why did I attack there? I hit the button and then it didn't do anything and then it attacked like five seconds later. One more hit. Why not finish it with a backstab? Okay. So got another 500 souls. 500 souls is not a whole lot considering the, you know, damage that those guys can deal out. And we're still pretty far from our next bonfire, so we've got to be careful. Now, you'll see that there's boulders coming through here. This is one of the most risky parts in the game, at least in my mind. We've got to wait till that boulder hits, and then we're going to run up the tunnel that it essentially took to get to us. And this is like some Mission Impossible shit. We've got to dive under it. Come on! Oh, God! It still hit us. But it didn't do that much damage, which is okay. We'll get another Estus. And then you'll see that there's this boulder mechanism here, so we can change the direction that the boulder goes. I am going to make it go harmlessly outside. Now, it might seem like this is a puzzle, but Dark Souls doesn't really do puzzles in a Zelda sense. Like, we don't have to use this to open a secret door to progress in the game. What we can do is use this to open some secret doors and find some new items, but uh, I might do that either off-camera when I come back to Sen's Fortress, or uh, I might just not do it at all. Now that that boulder is safely diverting elsewhere, we are just going to come down here. I took some stupid lightning damage there, but that's okay. Now this is the area that the boulder would normally go. Hopefully that lizard guy isn't chasing me. Worth noting that when I play this game, I actually have the sound off in order so that it doesn't come out through my microphone, through my TV. Uh, so sometimes I might be surprised by enemies because I can't hear them coming from behind me. Now, this is one of the trickiest parts in the game. Let's check out what this message says. Imminent death. That's a good message. Because this chest is actually tricky. If you just try to open it, arms will pop out of it, and it will actually eat you alive. It will kill you in one hit. So what we have to do first, and we'll do this with every chest that we come across for the remainder of the game, just to be sure. Attack it, then it'll pop out like that. And we can actually fight it. I believe he still has a one-hit kill, though, so you've got to watch out for it. I'm going to use my Great Chaos Fireball, which I picked up from Kailana, to do as much damage as possible. One more might do it. Oh, but I'm out. Fireball again. Just because my Pyromancy is doing so much more damage than my uh, regular attacks right now. Okay, we should probably Estus just to be safe. I could probably kill him without it. But better safe than sorry at this point. Pyromancy. One more after this should do it. Excellent. Okay, now when he dies, he will give us the weapon that we are going to use for the remainder of Sen's Fortress and parts of the next area. So this is our Lightning Spear. Hopefully I have the stats required to use it. Find this here. Lightning Spear. Ah, oh, hold with both hands. I don't like that. I really should have put some points into strength at some point, I guess. 
Um, okay, well, I guess we will two-handed then. What does it require, anyway? Uh, let's look at this quickly. Toggle display. Required strength 11. I'm missing one point. One point, and you can only level up at bonfires. That's so disappointing. Uh, well, let's, let's wield it with one hand for now, just so I can use my shield, and I can always switch to two hands uh, when necessary. You can see that when I try to attack using one hand right now, it doesn't really, it's not <laughs> looking too uh, impressive. It also takes like 25 seconds for the cooldown to finish. Uh, so this is unfortunate, to say the least. But luckily, we, we don't have too many more enemies to kill. I should be able to get through them two-handed. Alright, so our next area is through here, through the most difficult traps yet. Basically, you just want to run through this one, and you'll be okay. And then we've got another set of axes, which I'm just going to take a second of mental preparation for. Very thin bridge, axes that are very close together. Best way I've found to get through this one is run as fast as you can. Got to control the camera as well, which is kind of a problem. So we'll wait for this guy to attack. Switch to two hands, get an attack in, switch back to shield and get stabbed in the back. I might just be able to take him down the normal way. Uh, because I'll, I'll stun lock him occasionally. Okay, but you can see this is much more effective than my, my past way of taking these guys out, which was nearly impossible. Uh, taking like 500 years with the... Uh, with the scimitar. This guy should be very easy as well. The good thing about two-handing is that we do do more damage with it. Now, this is maybe the hardest part in the whole fortress. We have to get across this narrow bridge, which is by far the most narrow, and the most difficult axis. Be wary of left. Very good advice. And we also have to deal with this jabroni right here. This guy's gonna throw lightning at us. So what we're gonna try to do, I'm gonna watch him with my camera here. When he stops throwing lightning, I'm going to try to knock him with a fireball, and hopefully that'll knock him off that tiny platform that he's got there. But definitely, patience is a virtue right here. Uh, and if you just run out onto that axe bridge, you're screwed. I mean, it, it, it sucks, but you're done. Okay, he's, he's lost his aggro, I guess. We're going to come out. I would love to lock onto him before I start using the pyro flame, but it might not be possible. Okay, throw it, throw it, throw it. I got hit by the lightning, but I hit him. Okay, I can continue trading blows like that. We're pretty close to the bonfire. Not, not right next to the bonfire, but pretty close. Anything can happen in this part of Sen's Fortress. This is the, the worst part, is that the bonfire is so far away from the start of Sen's Fortress. Like, all the stuff that I've done right now could just fall by the wayside if I, if I fall down. So I've really got to try to make that last bridge go. Okay, one more fireball. I should really have used it right there. That's okay. I also take a step with every time I throw a fireball, so I've got to be cautious about that. Okay, we'll use our Estus, and this is the last huge trial that we have to go through before we defeated Sen's Fortress. Walk very carefully across this bridge. I may not talk through this, because if I fall, huge reaching implications. I would probably just record it in a... I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it, okay, now don't step on that trap. Good, okay, we made it. Still not guaranteed that we're gonna get to the bonfire, but much, much better. They hide the bonfire in Sen's Fortress, which is such a dick move, but is so typical of Dark Souls that I, I kind of am begrudgingly admirant of it. We are just gonna sprint up through this next area. Don't pay any attention to that item. Fall off the edge before the giant fireball lands. Light bonfire, oh my god, we made it, okay. That was, that was harrowing, to put it the least. Now, this is the only bonfire in the area. So we are going to reverse hollowing here, become human. This is another hotbed for invasions, but let me see uh, what level I am. Actually, I'm going to level up one point in strength so I can wield this lightning spear effectively too. Um, there we go, okay, now we should be able to wield the lightning spear effectively in one hand. Yes, indeed. Okay, that's much better. Uh, and the reason I'm... Oh, I want to check my level, too. 32? Uh, we might get invaded here. The thing with invaders is that most invaders invade up, so they have to be a lower level than the person they're invading. Level 32 is pretty low for Sen's Fortress, which is just a testament, testament to how awesome I am, right? 
No, but seriously, uh, we're probably not at a huge risk of being invaded, and it's a good idea to be... Oh, good idea to be human here, because it will allow us to uh, summon an NPC that's going to help allow this fight. Another two large Titanite shards. You know what? Uh, actually, I don't know if that's going to right now. I've upgraded at our next bonfire. Now, I'm just going to be a little bit cautious through here. If you look... I, I can't really look behind me right now because a giant fireball is going to fall behind me. I'm not sure if you can see those on camera, but you can probably hear them. Uh, if you j make that jump over into that area right there, you will actually find a, uh, a merchant. And I will go to that area, but I might not do it right away. The reason I, I want to do it in this video, though, because it opens up a, a shortcut that is very important for us. First come up here. We're getting very, very close to the boss, and I'm hoping we'll find some summon f summoning signs for summon phantoms, but we may not be so lucky. You can see there's arrows being pelted at me right now, and you can see that dick golem who is actually throwing the rolling, rolling boulders in there. Skeleton guy. Sometimes he will drop a titanite shard. No summon signs in front of the boss door, which sucks. We will get uh, Iron Tarkus here who is a very tanky NPC summon and is also exceptionally helpful. Now, if you're watching this and you play uh, Dark Souls Online, maybe you're playing through your first time, if you're about to fight the boss through that fog door, always, always summon Tarkus. And this is coming from someone who co-ops a lot on this boss fight. There's two things you need to do in order to ensure your safety. Summon Tarkus. With him, the boss fight is very easy. I've actually soloed him myself many times. And you must also come up here and destroy this golem. Otherwise, you are going to be in hell. Because this guy's just going to throw fireballs at you the entire fucking time. Now, when you're using the lightning spear, because of the way that the lightning spear attacks, you're probably better off not locking onto an enemy and instead just trying to aim your shot with your camera. Uh, how's Tarkus? Perfect, okay. I took some damage, but that's alright. Probably won't need all this essence to take out the uh, iron golem. Okay, this guy's dead. I put this in a much better position. He drops... Titanite Chunk, wow, that's big. That will allow us to upgrade uh, lightning weapons a little bit later. Still no summon signs. You know what, I'll get the key a little bit later. For now, let's just go fight the Iron Golem, shall we? Tarkus, you in? All right, let's do it, buddy. Now, one of the things you want to keep in mind when you're fighting the Iron Golem is the layout of the arena, because if you die, oh, it's the first time I've ever taken a hit there. If you die, it's probably not from actually, like, getting pummeled to death. It's probably from walking off the edge or getting hit off the edge. And actually, the safest place to be when you're fighting targets is right underneath him. There's only one attack that can hit him. For now, we're just going to two-hand our weapon. Basically, go to town on him. That's the attack that can hit us from here. He can grab us like that and hopefully not throw us off the edge. Thank you. Much appreciated. Now, stay away. I need to use some Estus. Okay, now, Tarkus, hero that he is has just demonstrated how to really get to the Iron Golem, and that's that you can stagger him if you uh, attack one of his legs over and over and over again. It might be both of his legs, but it seems to work also with one of his legs. So we're just going to go to town with our Lightning Spear here. You can see I'm running out of stamina, so this would be a good opportunity to maybe use some Great Chaos Fireballs, and then run away because he's going to be trying to hit us now. Obviously Great Chaos Fireball is my most powerful pyromancy spell, but I also get the fewest uses of it. Oh, that hurts. But again, I'll be okay. I'll just use one Estus. Oh god, he's coming for me. No, Tarkus got him. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks, Tarkus. Tarkus, true bro. Now, we've got a Humanity, Core of an Iron Golem. I could go interact with that circle there, but instead let's make sure we're actually kind of done with Sen's Fortress. I did just pick up 40,000 souls. I'm going to spend those immediately on large Titanite shards from this merchant that I mentioned down here. Which is good because it will also give me an opportunity, opportunity to access uh, a shortcut, which will mean that next time I go through Sen's Fortress, I don't actually have to go through all those axe bridges and stuff. I can just kind of get about 2% into the level, and then I can take an elevator up, essentially. So, let's come down here. Now we don't have to worry about the firebombs anymore because the firebomb golem is dead. Obviously, he's the guy that we killed on the, the very, very top, not the actual boss. Let's try to make this jump. Made more difficult because there's no dedicated jump button in uh, Dark Souls. You kind of have to manipulate your roll button to do it. <clears throat> but it still it works pretty, uh, pretty effectively. So what do we have here? We have a merchant. Um, sorry, I skipped his dialogue. I took on Sen's fortress alone. But I am so different from those vile creatures. 
I was driven by conceit. Ah, you think you're different? That you can handle it? Yes, I, I remember that feeling. For I was the same. So, let me help you out with your soul searching. Uh, I've got news for you, buddy. I already did beat Sen's Fortress. So items that we can purchase from him, uh, varieties of Titanite Shards, Fire Bombs, and Green Blossoms, which actually will come in handy for a few boss fights. I might pick up some later. Great Sword, Great Axe, Balder Shield, Tower Shield, not really interested in any of those. Arrows, which I may pick up. Do I need any arrows? How many do I have right now? Held, 114. Let's pick up 100 arrows. 800 arrows is probably too much. We'll still have enough souls to get... Uh, yeah, one, Let's pick up another 114, just for symmetry's sake. Uh, we got this onion armor here, which is actually pretty funny to use. Effective as well, heavy. Um, I could buy a whole set right now, but I would rather buy some large Tardinite shards. Let's buy 11 of those, that's fantastic. Whoa, can I make something of yourself? All right, shut up, man. I already made it. His, his deal, essentially, is that he... Uh, basically just hangs out in Sen's Fortress, and then whenever an adventurer like us dies, he pillages them for their armor. And also their wares. And then he sells them to me. But, unfortunately for him, I, well, I guess I did die in here, but I came back from it. I got better. We got one more lizard guy who probably will not be too much of a threat, considering I can basically two-hit, three-hit him with my lightning spear. And we get the cage key, which is super important. Again, if we ever want to come back through Sen's Fortress, and I probably will. Like, the level that I'm at right now, this is a very good level for me to do co-op at um, Quaylog, who you saw last video. Maybe even a good enough level for me to do co-op at Capra Demon, who we saw like five videos ago. Uh, and it's probably actually a little bit low for me to do co-op here at the uh, Iron Golem, but I would like to anyway, because it gives you a ton of souls, and it's a relatively easy boss fight. Make that jump again, and what we're going to do is come back here... I'm just doing some basic uh, maintenance stuff before I move on to the next area. Because once we go to the next area, it's going to be a while before we can come back. So we'll open our cage here. Get into the cage, and this will unlock the shortcut to Sen's Fortress. Totally missed this my first time playing through the game. Uh, not a mistake you want to make. Because it's going to make it much, much, much more difficult for you to do pretty much anything. We're going to step out of the cage. Step back into the cage and just hold our shield down so that we don't take any damage there. Ride this baby back to the top. What should I do? I guess I'll go back to the bonfire and upgrade my weapon. No, actually, we'll come across a new bonfire very quickly. But I only have one Estus. You know what? Let's clear out all the other stuff that we're going to see in, uh, in Sen's Fortress. Because why not, really? We might as well uh, kill everyone that we come across. And pick up all the items that we can get, at least on Upper Sense Fortress here, before progressing to the next area, which, of course, if you've played Dark Souls, you know is An Orlando. Pretty uh, difficult area for most people the first time they play through the game, but also An Orlando is one of my favorite areas. So I'll come down here. The reason I'm going back to the bonfire is A, to replenish my Estus. I should get five now. May even, uh, I don't know, it seems kind of a waste to kindle that bonfire, considering I've already beaten the boss here. But I will reinforce my scimitar as much as I can. I have enough large titanite shards. I don't think I have enough money to actually reinforce it to plus 10. Uh, oh, I do. Okay, so now we got our scimitar <clears throat> excuse me, to plus 10, which will allow us uh, to upgrade it as soon as we find our next blacksmith in An Orlando to a Quelog's Fury Sword, which is going to basically, for all the people that have been commenting, wow, like Northern Line, you're not doing very much damage at all, this will nullify that, because Quelog's Fury Sword is fantastic, and it's actually an interesting sword because it scales with humanity. So the more humanity that you have, the more damage that it does. So while we're just taking care of business here in Sen's Fortress, let's go fight this Black Knight over here. Um, could probably just be a big dick bag and throw my Great Chaos Fireball at it. Uh, although that's not going to hit and do any damage at all. Oh, 34 damage, fantastic. And again, these guys are going to be fairly difficult right now, uh, but... Less so than they were when we fought a similar one in Undead Parish. In fact, I don't even think this is a traditional Black Knight. Oh, God. Okay, let's move backwards a little bit. Use an Estus, because, of course, after I talked about how easy he would be, he started to stomp me. Let's heal again. Don't run at me, bro! Oh, my God. What have I done? 
Get out of there. We're going back to the bonfire quickly. <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. You gotta be very careful. Don't run off this edge because you could easily kill yourself. Which would probably be the worst way to go that I could imagine. I was really worried that that Black Knight was actually going to drop down on top of me. So we're just going to rest at the bonfire for a second. And let's see. Uh, I guess, we, yeah, we might as well kill the Black Knight. This will be a long episode, but oh well. Normally, if you watch, like, other Dark Souls Let's Play, Sen's Fortress is, like, a sprawling, multi-part epic for them. At least for people that are doing it on a blind run. And I'm not, like, deriding that. It was for me as well. But that's one of the reasons I really wanted to not do a blind run of this game, because people are like, wow, no, then it would be much better. Well, I shouldn't say that. By and large, the response to this Let's Play has been very positive, and I'm very grateful for that. But there are some people who are like, this is no fun to watch because you're not dying all the time. Well, this is not necessarily a fun game to watch someone die at all the time, because you're just seeing the same areas over and over and over. And if you want to hear me like do my worst angry video game nerd impression, then I guess that would be you know the kind of content that you might want to see. But... For me, I would rather kind of take a more mature approach with the game. I mean, I realize I do say, like, save the shit out of that guy's ass. Don't you dare use Estus! It's, like it's, not, it's not like I'm not cursing, but I'm trying to take a, like a more mature approach to the game. Anyway, we murdered that guy very easily this time. Then we'll come down here. There's not, like, substantially good items down here, but there is some half-decent stuff. We'll come across. We'll, we'll meet a, a guy here. This is Ricard. Uh, he's not a fan of what we're doing here in Sen's Fortress, I guess. But he's also fairly easy to take out. He's a little bit more powerful than your, your standard enemy. As you can see, he's taking like, he's probably gonna take eight or nine shots with the Lightning Spear. The cool thing about the Lightning Spear is that it attacks so effectively and so quickly. Oh, it already broke his stamina, so this will probably be the death of Oh, he just parried me. Not that it matters. All right, he'll die. We might as well recharge using Estus here. And he will drop his Rapier. Never really used that as a as a weapon in Dark Souls, so I'm not sure if it's great or not, but hey, NPC dropped it, so it's probably not bad. Remembering always to hit the treasure chest before we open them, just to make sure they are not mimics, which is the, the treasure chest that would have eaten us alive. Picked up a divine blessing, which is a, a nice item, and a rare ring of sacrifice. So the divine blessing actually allows us to let's say we're poisoned and we have almost no health. Using divine blessing will remove the poison and heal us fully. So it's a, a very powerful item. Not that you really get that many opportunities to use it, because let's say you're in battle. Uh, what are you going to do? Pull that out very quickly? Unlikely. And the Rare Ring of Sacrifice is good, because uh, if you equip that... It's actually not that good, but it's, it's useful at certain points in the game. When you equip that, when you die, you go back to the re most recent bonfire you rested at, but you don't lose souls and humanity. So you actually maintain uh, the souls and humanity that you had before. Uh, you can see there's another item down there. I'm actually going the wrong way here. Let's turn around. But we are very nearly done with Sen's Fortress. I promise you that. Uh, at, to end this video, I'll probably murder these guys down here, rest of the bonfire, and then next video, we'll start Anne Orlando fresh. So that's where we came up. Come down here. There should be one balder, maybe two. Again, it should be fairly easy to take out. Uh, as long as I don't lose all my stamina like I just did right there. Maybe we can actually parry this guy. Oh, feels good. For some reason, I didn't get the repost off there. The reposte, but that's okay. We'll pillage a Titanite Shard from him. Good, because we're going to want to upgrade our Uchi Katana soon. Heal before we come across this next enemy right over here. And see if we can parry this guy as well. Come at me. Come at me. Oh, that was a bad parry. Those are very bad parries. This is a, less a Matthew Perry, more of a Rick Perry. Okay, well, maybe I'll just murder you the old-fashioned way, then. If you don't want to go out like a boss, I'll just take you out like a scrub. Just got one more hit left. He did break my stamina there. Oh my god, he might kill me! He killed me! This one remaining balder actually killed me. That's disgusting. Well, now I can't end the video just yet. I have to go down. Oh. Uh, Wizard's work is never done. This is going to be the longest episode of Dark Souls that we've had so far. Crazy! Sense Fortress, uh, once you get that shortcut, is a five minute, well less than five, like a two second ordeal essentially. I can't believe I died to that guy, that's such a joke. I shouldn't have tried that one parry, that's where it all went, all went wrong. And I'm only going back because I really want to get that humanity. I mean, I won't be human, so I've already lost one humanity from reversing Hollow. 
But that's okay. We will pick up whatever that guy left in that treasure chest. I honestly can't remember what it is. And I'm not even sure it's very good, but... Now it's about honor. Go to town on these guys as usual. Try not to use up all my stamina. He says as he uses up all of his stamina. Oh, he tried to use Estus there. He caught the quick, like, first few frames of that animation. Pick up our blood stain. All right, buddy. I tried to parry you again. What am I thinking? Just go for the backstab. It's so easy. I want him to try to Estus. I want, him to, I want to kill him in, like, the least honorable way possible while he's healing. There we go. Okay, that backstab should do it for him. Man, this video actually has two deaths. Absurd. Make sure to attack this. Pop it open. What do we have here? Flame stone plate ring. Do I even have like one ring equipped? I have no rings equipped. Might as well equip the flame stone plate ring. I'm not going to equip the rare ring of sacrifice because the one thing I forgot to mention is that once you use it once, it breaks. And I definitely want to save it for a later point in the game. Uh, because otherwise, you know, I could just die randomly by falling off an edge right here. Or getting killed by a single balder. And I definitely don't want that to happen to me. Because I might want to use that rare ring of sacrifice a little bit later. So well, here we go. We'll rest at this bonfire again. This has been all of Sen's fortress. Kind of surprised that it worked out as well as it did, despite those two deaths. As always, thank you guys for watching. In the next episode, we will finally journey off to An Orlando. This has been kind of a long episode, taking care of the you know miscellaneous trash. I'm looking at you, merchant, in Sen's fortress. But next episode, things are going to heat up a little bit as we go to uh, An Orlando. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.